absolute hall of famers <laughs> european in, players in book. with short names <laughs> low point totals <laughs> and drug addictions stick talk stick Hockey. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Yes, sir. Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 80 of Stick Talk Hockey. As always, I'm your host, Tico. This is my co-host. I'm yours, Trilly. That's our producer. Big J. And we are here for the 80th dang episode. We tick ever on. We tick ever on, indeed. Regular season fully underway now. Every team has played their, their home openers at this point. Great to see. Uh, the Blue Jackets home opener. What a tearjerker that was. Oh, my God. A beautiful moment. I mean, like, for real, shout out to the Panthers organization. Shout out to the Blue Jackets organization for putting together that night. That was special to watch. I, I thought everything was just so well done. I yeah. mean, from, you know, Monaghan taking the draw. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, he won it over to Bennett. And then Bennett leaving it in the spot. Leaving it in the open spot there. They I, they they only dressed or only had four skaters on the ice for that there. Left the left wing open. I and yeah. uh I, Kachuk was supposed to play that, but yeah. he uh was sick, unfortunately, which is just su- super, super unfortunate. But they they really did make the most of it and like yeah. you know, tragedy strikes hockey very seldom, but God, does the community ever know how to come together? Yeah, uh, one one hundred percent. Um, it, it it was it was a really really well done tribute with the family there. Um, the thirteen seconds running off the clock, and then, I mean, the cherry on top was Monahan scoring the goal, uh, uh pointing up to the banner. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just like a perfect, perfect way to start that game. Yeah. I honestly can't, don't even have too much to say on it other than, like, just, like, what a beautifully poetic moment. Yeah, 100%. It, it warms my heart to see everyone coming together and also, like, not doing too much, but also yeah. doing just the right amount, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll run the clip on the YouTube. If you're if, if somehow you missed it and you, you're listening on the podcast, definitely go watch it. It was, it was really well done. Both benches standing here, and we're going to have a moment. There's no left winger. And we'll drop the puck. 13 seconds. What a moment. Off the clock. Look at Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I. it's a little off topic, but not really. Mm-hmm. I kind of got to hand it to this Blue Jackets team. Yeah. Because, like, through all of it, thick and thin, they're making a season out of it already. Yeah, they're making do right now. I mean, they got really, really tough news this week on Eric Branson, right? He's going to be down for, looks like, months. Yeah, that's tough. You're right, though. As tough as it's been for the Blue Jackets, they really are seeming to, like, rally around it a little bit, and that's great to see. Uh, absolutely, because they they had two options, and one was just to phone it in and play eighty two games and wrap it up. Yeah, but uh, I I think it really just like is beautiful that they're using this and trying to win on Johnny's yeah. behalf as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. So first segment of the day today, a segment called "How Long Is the Leash?" Woof. Woof is right. <laughs> Basically, we're going to start. We're going to go through uh, four teams here, and we're just going to basically go and ask how long it is before you panic for teams that are off to real rough starts here. Okay. I like it. So, first up, the big one. Um, I think this is kind of the big one because of last season and the – immediate you know parallels people are drawing but the edmonton oilers yeah how long do you give it before 
you get really nervous for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, granted, they have won a second game. Two in a row. Two in a row for them. They're now two and three. They started 0 oh and three. They're close to pulling it back. Like yep. I'm I was never really concerned. Right. I, I was looking at it like, well, that's interesting. Sure. But I wasn't deeply concerned about it. If they went to like be I don't know, if they picked up another three losses consecutively, I that that's when the leash snaps. Is like probably game eight, nine. Mm -hmm. I, I say 10 is like the absolute breaking point and you know if they didn't pick up that win in their last game then it would be less yes a hundred percent and it, it's a tough thing right because it's the beginning of the season and everyone's watching so intensely right if you go on a three game losing streak in the middle of January on a through a week no one cares not really, no. But it's the beginning of the season, and Edmonton started so horrendously last season that the eyes were amplified on it, right? Now, um, when they were 0-3, I was getting nervous real quick. Because, like, really for Edmonton, this is their shot. This is their year. They're running out of years really, really quick. They are, and, and when you look at... I mean, Dreisaitl got the extension. It hasn't kicked in yet. Nope. McDavid will be getting one soon as well. Yeah. This is the last year that you're ever going to get this much surplus value out of those two. Yeah. And I mean, like, where where's your bottom six going to go once once those kick in, too? Well, that that's that's exactly it. As, as soon as that surplus value deletes itself and Dreisaitl and McDavid are getting paid what they – are worth there's never going to be a time again where you're saving as much money on them as you are right now no and and i mean that you can then reallocate into your other areas so i mean really like because then uh, ideally you hope for this again right where the cap's risen up enough that you're getting surplus value on the contracts but by the time that happens again both these guys will be well into their 30s yeah and then you're looking at a Stamco situation. Yeah. Do do you give them what they deserve? Do you keep them around? Or do you say shoe? Or, I mean, like, are you getting, you know, McDavid's going to get $16 million. Are you getting $16 million in value in 2033 or whatever that is? And, I mean, I'm not going to bet against Connor McDavid ever in my life to hold his value. But. Hey, you know what? I would. But. I would. There's, yeah. there's like, when you look at the, the greats, you know, like your Crosbys and your uh, uh, guys, I guess you got to talk salary cap era, but, like, if we're talking salary cap era, like your your Crosbys, your 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 Joe Thorntons who played forever, um, they really adapted their skills. And McDavid, as, as great as Connor McDavid is, he relies so much still on that speed. And the moment that first step kind of starts to deteriorate, I do kind of worry. I, I I worry beyond that, too, because, like, when you play with that kind of speed, your margin for error goes way down. Mm -hmm. Way, way, way down. Mm -hmm. And, like, how many times does he get lucky going into the boards funny? How many times does, you know, the slew foot not come of anything? How many yeah. times, like... We've seen him get tagged a couple of times yeah. and have some scary moments. Yeah. We've seen it with Stamkos. Yep. And we saw how bad that set him back Absolutely. for, what, two years? He didn't look the same? Yeah. I mean, I don't hope it happens. Of course, of course not. No. I hope it never happens. I'd love to see him, you know, threaten some milestone records. Yeah, and absolutely. Be the next Gretzky, even. But there's some red flags there. Absolutely, and it it just concerns me with that playing style. I love quick, fast, skilled guys. Of course, but they always concern me, especially once you've blown past a guy like twenty or thirty times in his career. Yeah, eh, it kind of gets personal, especially when he's on like a contract <laughs> year. Yeah, you know, like I, I agree. I, I, you see, Brendan Montour absolutely bury Mitchkov last night. I did. That was that was rough. That was boarding and a half. So to bring this full circle, though, like the point I'm trying to get to here is 
this is Edmonton's 2022 for Colorado. Yeah. When the McKinnon contract was about up, um, they had a bunch of expiring contracts that year, Darcy Kemper and stuff as well. And it was really like, okay, well, absolutely, they'll still be able to go for it again after this. But this is the most value we're ever going to get out of our top six or our top guys. So we better win. Yeah. Yeah. Unless something absolutely like miraculous happens and, you know, you get gifted a Panarin like New York or whatever you yeah. have. But like that's so few and far between. And Colorado went all the way in that year. As they should have. And it paid off. Well, aggressive teams. They went home with it. Aggressive teams make things happen. This is Edmonton's year to be that. They have to. Like, they, this is their year to go all in. I, I think that Edmonton needs to have hard conversations with themselves first, though. Because I think they're kind of stuck in a place where they look at dollars spent mm-hmm. and it, like, inhibits them from making the moves they need to make. Yeah, so some, what, what is that? Like, something like uh, sunk fallacy cost? Sunk yeah. cost fallacy, something like that? E- exactly. Like... Sometimes Darnell Nurse probably shouldn't play on your first line. Mm-hmm. And that's, doesn't. that's fine. Yeah. But at a certain point, like, like that happens through their lineup. Right. We've seen them inject guys, which, which looks almost strictly off paper value and currency. Right. And it's like, uh, okay, what have they done, though? You yeah, know? you have to be a, a puzzle piece team. Exactly. Yeah. And and more often than not, they're just like, well, no, we paid this, so we're going to work with that. Yeah. You know? I did want to know in that Colorado year as well, they did start 4-5-1. and one. They did not get off to a good start in that season, which is what kind of – I actually think they started 1-3 and three as well. So it's not to say that that can't happen. They did go on an absolute heater after that. So you got to hope Edmonton does as well. But Colorado, to me, that year left no doubt. And Edmonton needs to start leaving no doubt that they're one of the best teams in the West. A hundred percent. Actually, I I read a funny stat today. Uh, Teams have never won a cup that have started 0-4. That's not shocking. There's there's two teams that are 0-4 right now. Colorado. And Nashville. Yeah. Ding. Let's go right to them then. Let's go to Colorado because we were just talking about them. Yeah. Oh and four. What a great pivot. Are you nervous? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not nervous because yeah. I expected this. Sure. And I don't expect much out of Colorado this year. They just right. don't have a bottom six. No. Like No, they do not. Like if you when we were doing the episodes, like yeah. or the previews. Yeah, yeah. If you told me that Colorado was gonna go O and four, O and five to start the season. I probably wouldn't fight you on it. I'd probably yeah. be like, yeah, you know, th- yeah. this team kind of looks like they're going to take a while to get their, their wheels going. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Especially when you don't have those showy pieces at the bottom six. Yeah. Like, it's fine. You don't have to have showy pieces in the bottom six. You mm-hmm. can make it work. Yeah. But they have to learn to work together. Right. And then also, like, the injuries that they have. Lekkanen's still out. Exactly. Chushkin's like, still on his... Uh, Player yeah. assistance. Yeah, Landeskog obviously still gone. I I always forget about Landeskog. He's due back pretty soon though. I've heard he's skating, and I mean it's yes. progressing well. Exactly. But with all of those, it's not a super shock to me. As much as like I didn't expect him to go winless through the first week and a half of the season, uh, it's not a it's not a shock to me either. Now my my leash on them, like when I start to get worried about them making the playoffs is coming up agreed agreed what's your i'd say by 10 games if they're not if they haven't won a good if they haven't won like their own four right now i mean yeah if they don't win four of their next six they are one and four now they're one and four now they beat anaheim tonight okay so if they don't win three (laughs) yeah mckinnon ot winner that's right um if they don't win three of their next five I I will be nervous because th- things just start to snowball when you start out the gate so slow. You got to hope they can turn it on, but like when is going to be too late on when Landeskog comes back if Nachushkin's healthy, if Lekin, like like you know what I mean? There's just so many question marks. And like you said that bottom six is horrendous. It it doesn't look good. I mean, and the boy Georgiev is looking 
brutal. Yeah, but I mean, give them time. Give them time. Lots of goalies get off to slow starts. That's fine, you know. Yeah, yeah that that that's valid. Uh, if it got to like fifteen games and he sure. was still having the same issues, then it's definitely time to hit the panic button on him. But yeah. as an overall, I'm I'm not too concerned about their goaltending. I'm more just concerned about their supplement. Yeah, McKinnon's not going to be able to save this team in overtime every night. Yeah, my, no, no, definitely I, not. I think my breaking point would probably be the eight game mark. Even with the win tonight, mm-hmm. I, I I think mm-hmm. the win tonight pushes them to nine. But I I just see it as like eight games is like essentially ten percent of your season. Yeah, yeah, and like that means you're ten percent behind. Like and everyone else behind. out of the gate, and ten percent is like I just like I I feel like if they do get healthy, it's so easy for them to be like elite quick. But how many other teams are like elite? And what's in the, the central? Point? Not very many, especially with Nashville doing what Nashville's doing right now. Yeah, that one's actually a bigger shock to me than yeah. Colorado. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just like really bought into the Stamkos effect and you know marcia schult coming there like marcia's well, got that aura and 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 like you said like colorado has excuses yes as much as they're like there's no excuses it's a results-based league i understand that like the injuries and stuff like make it so that you look at that and go okay i kind of get it yeah we we can wait on this and Test yeah. the water in another five. Whereas Nashville's healthy. Nashville's very healthy. And was obviously one of the, like, they were the biggest free agency team. They were posed to be one of the biggest, Im- most improved teams in the NHL this year. But I think that's well, just a testament to what we said four episodes ago. Which is, you can't force that rebuild. Mm-hmm. You can't buy greatness. Mm-hmm. If the culture's not there, it doesn't matter who you bring in. Also, what you were just saying five minutes ago about, well, I guess we were saying about on paper versus puzzle pieces. Yep. Could be a part of this too. Absolutely. And so that that is the one thing that makes me a little less worried about Nashville is like, okay, it's a lot of new faces, right? And it's a lot of elite talent. So it's kind of in a world of like, okay, how is this going to be distributed? You know what I mean? So I understand some growing pains here. I thought they would be pretty mid out the gate. I didn't think they would be awful out the gate. Yeah, I expected some clunkers and low-scoring games. I expected Stammer to put up, like, a couple goose eggs in his first 10. Yeah. But... That's pretty much all he's put up so far. Yeah, and that's the big problem, right? And, like, more than anything... Is you're just not getting performance out of anyone. No. Besides Soros, no. which like is kinda weird. The boy. You see it? The guy. He's he's been yeah. he's had a good start to the season. You know, I'm not a big UC guy, but I, I will give mm-hmm. him credit. He's kinda kept Nashville even semi relevant. Uh yeah. D- Nashville, I mean, they're not relevant. They're dead last. But D- uh, well, I mean <laughs> semi relevant in the sense that like they didn't get like stomped into a mud yeah, hole and yeah. walked dry for four consecutive games like at least they made a game out of it yeah nashville i think i can give till american thanksgiving actually yeah yeah like i just think with the amount of new faces in there and the amount of talent there is there and just like how deep it is i think the team will be okay especially again in a central division that i just don't buy has a lot of good teams um, but they got to get something going here. You know what I mean? I mean, and I'm not going to give it till Thanksgiving if they're 0 and 20 at Thanksgiving, you know, but this is a team that just looks like it lacks leadership too. Maybe like, because you can't just bring in a top scoring guy and just be like, that's the leader. No, but I, Ryan O'Reilly's their leader, but then it's like, but that's what I mean about bringing in, you know, a captain of a multi-cup winning team like Stamkos, it's kind of like, 
okay, well, now where's the power dynamic, you know? Well, and you also have to think about the bottom six. Again, it's a big issue. Like something I don't I, mind their bottom six. Uh, my biggest thing is like, yeah, you can only have one captain. Yeah. And dressing a bottom six guy with an A is stupid. And you probably shouldn't do it, usually. Unless they're cool. Maybe. Maybe. Unless they're Exceptions. Cool. <laughs> Exceptions. <laughs> Vibes. Vibes. Yeah. Vibes alone. Kevin Hayes. Exactly. Give him the A. Yep. Yeah. But, but, I just firmly believe that you need to split your forwards into two sections. Okay. And your captain, your it guy, is in the first two. Okay. And he's setting the tone. And then you have someone to fall back on that's keeping the culture like, commiserate through the bottom end. For the Devils, it's Lazar. For Buffalo, it's Tuck. For, like, we could keep going Maybe. and start pulling all of these other guys out and be like, it's, you know? So you're saying, like, you need the, you need the like, captain and then you need, like, the energy leader. Yeah, like the veteran energy leader, like Felino. Yeah. I mean, he is on the first line, but he's only there to protect Bedard right now. Let's keep that square. But yeah. in a few years, if Felino s- still, by the grace of God, was around, he would be that energy leader in that like four spot, right? That just brings the boys together, and no matter what the score is, he's keeping them up. He's making mm. sure that they grind out every shift. Yeah, I I I see what you're saying. I think though that the multi-layered leadership you're absolutely right about. I don't think it has to be it has to come like that though. No, you know it's what I mean? just my favorite way to do it and I, in my opinion the simplest. Cuz I like like I like Boston's style of leadership where Bergeron is the guy, but he's not or was, let's let's say we'll go back a couple years here. Bergeron was the guy mm-hmm. and he's not like the it guy he is more of the like keep the culture guy but then they had brad who brought the energy up yeah but he's still a first line player he was he is but i mean like he hasn't always put up first line numbers yeah i guess so but like like come on he's been their first line winger for a long time yes yeah and I mean, like, yeah, a lot of teams do fall into that. Like, there's an energy guy that's just, like, in the top six. Mm-hmm. But even then, you could still look at, like, that cup-winning team and pull a vet out of the bottom six and say that was essential for their win. And you don't think Nashville has that? No. Hmm. Not really. Hmm. All right. Would Thomas you not Cito, say McCarran, that Jonathan Marcheseau is that guy? No. Fuck no. No. He just got there. I'm not taking shit from a guy who just got here. If we go down three nothing and the first thing you say to me is, Hey, that's okay, boys. Give me give me your best on the next shift. I'm gonna tell you to shut the fuck up. Get, the, like, like, get y- the fuck out of my face right now. Like Would you not though as like like I don't I I don't know. I don't buy that. Would you not look at a guy who's just been on who's just been an absolute leader on one of the best teams in hockey for years and just won a Stanley Cup? And be like, oh, maybe we should listen to this guy. I mean, you probably should, but yeah. like, he still has to earn it. It hasn't been earned yet, you know. Like, it's. Nah. I don't. There's, I don't think I buy it. There's, for leadership to be effective, there has to be trust, and without trust, leadership is just loud words. And, like, he hasn't earned the trust. Stamkos hasn't <laughs> earned the trust. That's why we're arguing about this potential power dynamic between. Ryan O'Reilly and Steven Stamkos. Yeah. My leash is actually longer for the team and very short for the coach. All right. If I don't see some lineup juggling very soon. Mm. Yeah, you, you have to when you have a new team like that. They haven't yet. Yeah. They're still playing Nyquist on that first line. What yeah. did I say? Gustav Nyquist is a f- bum. Goose egg, Yo. goose egg, goose egg, goose egg. Whole lot of goose eggs. You um, you had him as a fantasy pick. I I he's on my team. Yeah, 
I, I tried to trade him. I actually, we, we were going through our old fantasy picks from before, like like from earlier episodes before you got here. And what was, what first, was the one? It was the first fantasy picks of the year last year. First fantasy picks of the year. Yeah. For like Gustav Nyquist. That's that right. Was a, that was a heater pick. That was a heater pick last year. It was, but that was only He's because. A monster. That was only because Forsberg was having a career year, and That's he true. just happened to touch everything Forsberg touched. Yeah. By, like, happenstance. He didn't belong on that line. Oh, they, okay. I don't know, man. <clears throat> That's they, crazy. They tried him out on that line. It went great. And then they said, oh, we'll just keep trying it. And then it just stuck. That's called hockey. It was, yeah. It was, like, an elite line. Though. That was one of the best lines in hockey last year. Yeah. Like, wh- like. But but are they re- are they replicating it now? Are they replicating it now? Again, what's well, changed? That's what I mean. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying here. What's right? changed? Is, where's then? the leash then? Because like, is that four game sample size enough for you to be like, this guy's a bum? Is that what you're telling me? I've always thought he was a bum. What are you talking about right now? If Gustav Nyquist was worth his stock, then he would have been worth more of a damn in Columbus. The fact of the matter is that they actually nah. paid to get rid of him. I'll buy it. Okay. Guy was on an el- like literally one of the most elite lines in hockey last year. That's fine. He's been on my fan tracks team for five years, and I'm still trying to get rid of him. Just because someone has one great year doesn't mean that they're like elite by any means. He and, and I mean he's still good. He's yeah. an NHL player. Yeah, he's a top six NHL player. Okay, that's a like, good player though. Like that's a that good, is yeah, a, that's good a good player. player. That's not a bum. but he's not a point producer. Like, what do you? Yeah, please pull give me some stats. Gustav Nyquist pull stats. Me the, pull me the stats. Please. Like, he's clipped 50 w- twice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he had 53 points in Columbus a couple years ago. And then he had 75 points last year. Like, that's like that's like a fine first-line player. Ugh. Like, even before that, you have 49 and 62. And, uh... Or what? what is that total for 18-19? Actually... That's sixty points. That's fine. That's just that's fine production. No, that's games played. You're reading the wrong column. No, eighteen nineteen. He played for Detroit and San Jose. Forty nine plus eleven. Oh, weird. They don't have a total column there. Um, also, what was the worst Detroit Red Wings team in history again? It was uh the twenty nineteen twenty. COVID shortened season, mm. like the one that it was got... the year that he left. Yeah, he, I was did, gonna he say, did not play for them. He did not play for that team. I was gonna say like, if he put up forty nine on that team, that would be pretty crazy. But no, yeah, I don't know. Just in like standards of like first lines, I don't know. Maybe I'm spoiled because I have Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer and freaking Timo Meyer and yeah. Like, I can keep rattling them, you know? Like, you look yeah. at Toronto, and you're like, you have keep, Matthews keep, and Marner. and Keep rattling them? Yeah, you could keep rattling. Yeah. That's very good. That's clever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it just in this league, in this day and age, like, I, something's got to give with that first line. Ryan yeah. O'Reilly's getting older. Gustav Nyquist is, like, kind of getting old, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. The, the, I don't hate Gustav Nyquist. I don't hate Gustav Nyquist. I don't hate Gustav Nyquist. What? Gustav Nyquist is a f***ing bum. Huh? I said it like in the last episode too. I think that he's a very decent player. He's just not anything I'm ever going to be happy with on my first line. He's like Andre Pilat. I love Andre Pilat. Sure. But if you told me the Devils were going to play Andre Pilat on the first line for the next 80 games... Or however many are left, yeah. I'd be pissed. So are we? Are you like? Okay, I'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> are you like this team's? Like, like has your evaluation changed on this team through these four games? Yes. Yeah. That's fair. Zero and four is like a damning start. Like it's actually a damning start. <laughs> it's very damning, and it's also damning in the sense that they had a three nothing lead. Yeah, they did. And the, it, their legs just fell out from under them. Yeah. And it's also really concerning that nothing really besides Marsh changed in this bottom six, and they just can't seem to work it out. Not yet. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you. I really don't. 
I think I'm willing to give him a bit of a longer leash, but um, I'm, American salmon. Thanksgiving is fair, though. Yeah. I think you're being very fair in that like assumption. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the last one here. My boys. The Canucks. <sighs> Finally get their first win of the year last night, but not exactly a convincing one in overtime to a Florida Panthers team that was missing Barkov and Kachuk. Whoa, whoa, is right. So they, they're they one in three now. Um, but like I said, not a convincing one in three. Can I, can I start with this? Because I have things to say. By all means, dig in. I'm willing to give them a much longer leash than any of the other teams here. Okay. And shocker, the Canucks fan says this. But I, I say this in a time where I don't know if any of y'all have seen Canucks Twitter, but it's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> when is Canucks Twitter not falling apart? When they had 100 points last year. It was the first time in forever. That's not even true. You guys were still eating each other alive. <laughs> uh, anyways. I don't know. They're like, like, I put them on here because it seems like the freaking sky is falling around them. But there, there's like there's a few things at play for Vancouver. First of all, you're missing Pachodemko. Yep. Yes, we don't know when he's going to be back. If. If he's going to be back. However, like, a team that is now without a, their superstar goaltender, while also going undergoing, like, systemic adjustments, was one of the things we talk, talk about, talked about a lot going into the season, was, yeah, we played a really good game last year really strong systemically this year we need to do the same but we have to change it we had to, we have to add rush scoring in we did not score off the rush at all last year and we couldn't score when we got into to the the nitty-gritty of the playoffs against edmonton we have to change that i mean yeah especially again like in today's day and age of the nhl high octane offenses and i don't know the like, the coaching's too good. The players are too good. Yeah. The the science and the research into every team is too good. Yeah. You're not going to just power play zone a team no. into submission anymore. No. And then, I mean, honestly, one of the, like, pulses of the bottom six last year was Dakota Joshua. Yeah. Who also is not back. So, I mean, like, like it's just like I'm just not shocked at all. Right, if you had told me, okay, when the season starts, Demko won't be back, Dakota Joshua will be out, and they'll be working through some systemic changes, I'd be like, oh, so they're gonna have a rough start. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I'm gonna start getting really worried about them if we get to again American Thanksgiving and we have no like, and we still have no timeline on Demko or Joshua. Then I'm gonna be like, okay, this season might be pretty cooked. But I'm not too concerned about them, like going through some growing pains right now especially with calgary's is not a tough opponent but they've had a tough schedule outside of that and they're going to continue to through the rest of this month yeah and i mean i don't know, I, i'm not even worried at all mm. I like really the canucks always just do this yeah and it's like it's to be so expected I, of a team that has like a rough road schedule you're gonna right just out the gate yeah, you're just going to fall into these, like, slumps. And, like, the fortunate thing about having a shitty road schedule is that you also have a pretty favorable home schedule, usually around the holidays. Yeah. Just because it's easy as shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's always the Canucks trend is down, up, down, up. And then yeah. they kind of just hit it and stay up on an upward trajectory. I'm not overly concerned about it my only like concern really is demko yeah uh, yeah like, absolutely like my thing is like i don't care where this team sits if when you hit the all-star break demko still has no word on his return mm -hmm. could give a flying f your first or 30th yeah you're cooked you're no, cooked that, either way that's a hundred a hundred percent there are there's with Thatcher Demko, there's a world where they could be a contender this year. Easy. That's it. Like that's 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 the bottom line. Yeah. And without him, there's not. A hundred percent. 
That's, and I'm I'm yeah. not a big fan of drawing hard lines. Like we're, we're I'm very on both sides of the fence mm-hmm. and walking the tightrope in this pod a lot of the time. That's a hard line I am very willing to draw. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, like you could make the argument for sure that he's their second most valuable player, and that's behind like Quinn Hughes, who is not just, like, an average good player on a team. Like, that, this dude is the best defenseman in franchise history who just won a Norris. You know what I mean? Like, and after him, it's probably Thatcher Demko over Elias Pettersson and JT Miller. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that at all, especially how Pettersson's played in the last... Yeah. I know. Since February? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it kind of speaks to, like, making a guy sign a contract when he's not ready for it, though. I'm not worried. You know what? I'm way less worried about Elias Pettersson than I am the Canucks. Elias Pettersson's truly elite. I He's agree. going through things. That's that's fine. He looked like so good last night, actually. Um, and people won't haven't talked about it because he didn't have any points to show for it. He could have had a four last night easily. Like he looked phenomenal. So I think I think the Elias Pettersson that we know and that Vancouver fans are waiting for he's coming back I'm not worried about it yeah I like it I I believe it entirely honestly and I think Joshua is going to come back and be in full force yeah I think a lot of your guys that like drive the offense in a secondary sense have Mm. also been really really useful players like I've been nothing but impressed with Connor Garland love Connor Garland like Every year, he just moves up in my book of yeah. like favorite players. It's it's so hard not to love Connor Garland. <laughs> he's, he's just the little engine that could that guy. Yeah, he's my type of guy. Just yeah. a depth dude. Uh, excuse me, a depth dude who somehow finds a way to score thirty goals. Like yeah. it's like okay, yeah. Besser as well. Like shout out to Brock. So let's go to the reverse now. We'll flip this around to the teams that are off to good starts. And tell me how long it takes till you buy that they're a really good team. Number one, Utah. Kind of already there. See, me as well. Um, I think that, but like, I'm not like, my opinion hasn't changed overtly, I should say. But I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm looking at them and their record and going, yeah. And the games that they played, they are better. I already like I've I've got some confirmation bias because I thought they were going to be better, and now I look at them. And I'm like, yes, this team is better. They look fun. I think that a lot of this team has really progressed and progressed in a linear fashion that's really easy to track and yeah. not overestimate or underestimate. Yeah, Dylan Gunther's been on an incredible rise. <laughs> And he's, Has he ever? He's still doing his damn thing. Looks great, dude. Yeah, and they got a ton of prospects and a ton, a ton of guys that are just mm-hmm. doing nothing but adding to their game every day. Their new decor looks good. A- exactly. And my biggest thing was, like, even when they were in Arizona last year, I was looking at the team and going, like, this is not a, a bad team. Yeah, it's they were much, like... Much worse than they should be. You yeah, know what I mean, like, yeah, they yeah. actually played like way under a standard I yeah. had for them, yeah. even though I absolutely couldn't stand the <laughs> Desert Dogs. I wish nothing but hell for them. I wanted them to go zero and eighty two. Yeah, but I still looked at them and was like, "There's a ton of potential here." There's like, a team here. Yeah, I've been actively looking at buying players from Arizona now Utah. Yeah, because I believed in that team. Yeah, and I I thought you know. My team's not, you know, challenging for a, a cup this year, but sure. in two to three years, yeah, those players will be right where I need them to be when yeah. I want to be challenging for a cup in our fantasy league. So, like, that was the circle. Yeah. Yeah. They they really just needed a better place to fucking train. Yeah. They 100%. needed a state-of-the-art gym, a yes. state-of-the-art arena. Yes. Like, an owner that cared. And... Ding. Ding. Okay, so we're in agreement. Utah's better. Yes. 
Uh, how about Calgary? Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. The Calgary Flames are awful. The, there's so little that I believe in more right now. The Calgary Flames are awful. Do not get concerned that you may have misjudged this team. You haven't. They're bad. Bad. What did, didn't Anaheim, were we talking about this, Jay? Didn't Anaheim go mm. like 7-2 and two to start last year? Yeah, something like that. They did, Like, they looked, like, obviously, <laughs> we didn't buy it, but they did look good. No. Yes, exactly. Calgary, so, yeah. here's what's going to happen with Calgary. The spirits are high. Huberto looks great. One injury. And that this entire thing is falling apart. And in April, we're going to go, oh, yeah, they're in 29th market. Uh, I'm so on the fence because, like, yes. Yes. Yeah. If. But, I mean, yeah. Well, who do they even have in reserve right now? Like, who are their – I guess they got, like, Grindon guy. Sure. But he's still got another year of WHL. Yeah, can least. you look up uh the Flames prospects? Yeah, or just like a a depth chart. Like, do they have a thirteenth or a, sorry, a fifteenth forward signed? Breaking. I'm sure they have one signed. <coughs> but are they like notable? <laughs> yeah, the question. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Washington has Jacob Vrana signed as their thirteenth sure. forward right now. I don't mind that. That's oh, we my, know. That's my captain. <laughs> That's my captain. The I searched cocaine crash out. I searched in my text the name Verana, and there was like twenty two from you. <laughs> that is my. your boy. I love Verana and Sammy Blay. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> absolute Hall of Famers, <laughs> European in, players, in book with short names, <laughs> low point totals. <laughs> And drug addictions. <laughs> Sign <Yeah>. me up. <laughs> Unbelievable. In a different life, just, I was a puck bunny. Unbelievable. Uh, okay, yeah. I don't know. If the question is, like, who's really coming up for this team this year, I don't know if there's anyone that's really going to come up. Like, I think they're already here. Yeah. No. You know? No, no, no. Uh, you know what? I, like the, the leash, I have. I'd have to give Calgary. Like if they're in a playoff spot at the trade deadline, I would be like, okay, maybe there's a chance they're swept in the first round. <laughs> That's really where I'm at. Like I just no. This team's bad. I think like at their absolute ceiling, they could be like the Flyers last year. Yes, exactly. I think that's very At the absolute ceiling. Yep, yeah, you're hundred percent right. I think that's like their mid, honestly. No. Their mid outcome? Yeah. Is being like a eighty four point team. Yeah, I think their ceiling's no. like ninety two, no. ninety three. I think they could be like teetering in that wild card. I don't think they're gonna do it, but I, I think would they're gonna up. be really close. If like, the Calgary Flames clear ninety points, like I'd give you I'd give you ten to one odds on that bet. It's pretty good odds. You put ten dollars, I will give you a hundred dollars if the Calgary Flames clear ninety points this year. Yeah, done. Deal. Easy. I'll give you a ten now. Uh, there's legitimately there's legitimately nothing nothing that could convince convince me that this team is good at all. I'll walk out on a ledge for it. Whatever. Like I kinda like a lot of this team. I think that there are a lot of players that just haven't been given enough of a shake or given enough trust in a lineup. Like, I don't know. I, I like Zari. I think that he's done great. I like Backland. I like, I like Coleman. Zari. I like Mantha. He's filled a really great role in that team lately. Like, he is not known as a guy who uses his size. <laughs> no. He's 6'5". He is. He's a freaking monster. 
but he's just been standing up for everyone, but also not in a goonish way either. Like, he's only bringing it if it's been brought. But he's not afraid to do it, and the boys have been responding to it, too. Yeah. Like, it's kind of crazy when Mantha goes out, gets in a fight, and then they score right after. Then he comes out the box and then scores himself. You're like, damn, all right. There might be something here. There's not. Blake Coleman's pretty damn sick. Sure, you, he's a little old, but like, I love me some Blake Coleman. And you know that I also love Blake Coleman. Like, yeah. I actually am a, I'm a big Blake Coleman guy. Yeah. And come I, on. Come like, on now. Like, look, like, come on. We we rode off Huberto, and I don't know if like like yeah, Huberto yeah. had some bad years, but does that make Huberto a bad player? No, no, not by the furthest stretch of the imagination. Huberto could have eighty five points this year. Huberto think, could have ninety points this year. This team's not clearing ninety points. I think the Kadri still got a lot in him. I think Pospisil's gonna take a step. I think Kuzmenko's gonna be much better than he ever was on the Canucks. Martin Pospisil's a he's a guy. That's my guy in That's fantasy. That's guy? Yes, he is. There's an injury Oof. right now, too. Is there? There's someone missing from this lineup. One of these things is not like the other. Where's the doubles Igor. player? Sharon Govich. Yeah, where's my Eags? Yeah. So, like... No. Bad hockey team. Sorry. Nah, I... If they can keep it going without Sharon Govich and then he comes back and they still keep it going, that's... <laughs> Come like, on, now. He's, he's not Mark Stone. We're talking about Igor Sharangovich here. He's fine. He's primed for 30 goals. Oh, my God. I, no, Calgary Flames are garbage. <laughs> Don't laugh over there, Jay. <laughs> I, I like the Flames, uh, but I will, like, for the sake of the segment, I'll say that, like, I would need to see them. I'd need to see them in a playoff spot by... Christmas. <coughs> Word. Give me holiday break, and I'll. That's like a, that's a well reasoned take. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just cannot stand by it. <laughs> that that's fair. I mean, it, there's some Canucks. There's some West Coast bias here. I I can see it. But I don't that's think fine. there is. I think this team's really bad. I still believe it's really bad. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> like everyone had a bad year last year too. Uyghur looked like. Yeah, because the team's bad. He Rasmus Anderson looked like <laughs> uh, Mackenzie Weger had a fantastic defensive yeah. season last year. Yes, and his he defensive most, numbers were and fantastic. He had the most goals for a defenseman. Yeah, did he? Yeah, yeah, he was. I thought Bouchard did. He was balling out last year. Maybe points, but not goals. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and okay, you know why? Well, you know why it didn't a... matter? They're bad. Well, Huberdeau had uh, like a thirty-point season, so yeah, yeah. they're bad. I don't. Doesn't, I don't buy Huberdeau. No, I still Why? don't. Why though? <clears throat> I just you hear or don't. I just don't buy the start to the year for him. No, because you know Jonesy, you're a smart fella. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the no, I I don't buy it. I I I'm standing on my business. At the beginning of the year, I put them squarely in that Anaheim San Jose tier. It's where they belong. They are they are last year's Anaheim. I think I put them just out of a playoff spot, did I not? Yeah. No. Oh, I don't know. You you had them at the bottom of the Pacific. Did I? Near the bottom. Near the bottom. Not not below Anaheim San Jose, but there I think at sixth. Yeah, okay. I still Nowhere near the playoffs. <laughs> Where they belong. We can move on from this. <laughs> this might be the best team I've ever looked at, honestly. No. <laughs> okay. You guys just don't respect Kevin Ball and the the offensive upside he brings to that roster. Pucks off the glass, skates on ice, the roar of a crowd when the home team scores a big goal. Nothing beats an NHL game live. Sometimes you're there for a big game and you know it's a big game. We've been to a couple game sevens and they've been just fantastic. But other times, you don't even know what the impact of that game is going to be. I ended up randomly picking up tickets to a Canucks and Penguins game in a, on a random December Monday night. And that ended up being Bruce Boudreaux's first game in Vancouver. The beginning of the Bruce, there it is, chance and era. These things can only happen if you go. 
And if you want to go see a game or not even a game, if you want to go see a show, if you want to go see a concert, Game Time has you covered. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through thousands of tickets. Like I said, it's not just sports. I'm a big Porter Robinson guy. He's coming to Vancouver in a few weeks here, and you can find tickets for as low as $27. The app has a great UI. It's super easy to browse. It's super easy to find exactly what you're looking for or just just see what's going on around you this week. And if you're going somewhere you've never been before, see views before you buy are a fantastic way to see what it's going to look like from your seat. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code THPN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code THPN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. The quest for the Stanley Cup starts now. The puck's dropping on the 24-25 season. Get in on all the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. It's super easy for first-timers to get started. Try betting on something simple like picking a team to win. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. Coming up, we got a great Tuesday slate here. I'm excited. You can find the Philadelphia Flyers at plus 185 over the Edmonton Oilers at dash 225. The Oilers have had a heck of a start to this season. But that's not everything. We got Chicago and Calgary. We got Seattle and Nashville. We got Minnesota, St. Louis, Vancouver and the Bolts, Vegas and the Capitals, New Jersey and the Carolina Hurricanes. It's a great day to watch some hockey. And if you're new to DraftKings, listen up. New customers bet 5 bucks to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Premium. Premium offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus premium terms at NFL.com slash terms. So what's this about an amulet? <laughs> you hear about the amulet? Kind of. So, vaguely. <laughs> from you. And go up a little bit, Jay. I want to get that guy's at in here. Oh, yeah. So this tweet came out. This week, first from a backlog reviewer, and, and then Jesse Marshall uh, at J Marsh O F tweeted that in case you missed it, John Tavares and Russell Brand are selling the same mystery amulet that they pass off as having healing properties that also protect you from Wi-Fi, and is backed by people who believe in mind control, which I did not have on any of my NHL bingo cards, and me neither. No, I did. <laughs> yeah. I never liked this guy. There was always something off about Johnny T. It's actually true. You've ne- you've never liked JT. I've I've always just had an off vibe about him. And you know what? This is just so like on I, the money. I yeah, like I don't know why, but I've always lumped him and uh Rogers, Aaron Rodgers, in the same <clears throat> category of athlete. That's so disrespectful, Darren Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what Kaz would do right now if he heard that take. <laughs> Kaz would lose his absolute mind. Okay, Aaron Rodgers plays perked out. <laughs> I don't care what you have to he say. Won, he won an MVP perked out. Like two of them. Two of them. <laughs> yeah, and Kurt Angle looked great on TNA when he was off the perkies too. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No. You know what though? They actually like low key have the same kind of like demeanor. Yeah. <laughs> you know Kaz will tell you that, that they, Aaron Rodgers is the goat over Brady. That's cap. But that's wild. <laughs> yeah. If this you know, was a like, football podcast, I could talk about that for a day. I'm gonna be real, Kaz and Jones used to do a football pod. That'd be yeah. That'd be interesting. be interesting. Uh I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> nah. Nah. 
I John Traveras uh, and Aaron Rodgers both look like wet dogs. Yeah, that yeah. It's actually really weird. That's they valid. just give off the same vibes. Just yeah, and like I, a... I won't be shocked if next next week Aaron Rodgers is selling some amulets, some healing amulets. Sounds on brand. It, to- it totally does, huh? Russell Brand. I see what you did there. Yeah. Ah. Um, nice. Did you see that picture of like everyone flinching on the bench except him? <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> is <laughs> like, <laughs> now I get it. The amulet will protect him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please drop that into the video. <laughs> oh yeah, oh for sure. This is um it's really something. There is just something I get it. Like like yes, rich undereducated white dudes just love to hop on the pseudoscience thing. I get it. Um Hell but yeah, <laughs> brother. <laughs> still just insane. Let's keto carb max cut to the tens. This is why though, like for real. As as much as these guys have like top tier trainers and health and and all of that, like, don't listen to athletes. No, they're just don't listen to Tavares. Don't listen to to Rogers. Don't listen to Kyrie Irving. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't listen to Kyrie Irving. Like, read a book. I beg you. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like, look, look. Th- Nazi Germany had athletes too. Okay. That's <laughs> all I'm gonna say about that. Like <laughs> All right. Shesterkin says, nah, hell nah. I don't want that eleven by eight, right? Jake Ottinger signs an eight by eight point five. He said yes please. Yes, please, I'll take that all day. And a side of cream. If it's true that Shesterkin declined at eleven by eight. Yeah. And that's eleven mil by eight years. Correct. correct? Yeah. <clears throat> that's how that's kind of weird to me why like do you think like i guess like a guy like carrie price did get like 10 and a half yep and 11 mil in 2024 is it's, not nearly the percentage yeah it's, of the it's cap less that, yeah. yeah so i okay actually i, I can kind of figure i can get it we had to we had to just had to walk had our to, way there. Had to speak it out. I get that. I could, yeah. Shusterkin can leverage himself into like twelve point five for sure. Absolutely, he can. Absolutely. I get this. No more. Val- no, yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's valid though. A hundred percent. Um, and that's that's actually what fans should do, because that's the thing when people people are seeing that headline about a Shusterkin turning that down and going, "Who does this guy think he is?" But the truth of the matter is, yeah, the cap has gone up. Elite goalies have always gotten paid. Bobrovsky got $10 million like 30 years ago or something. <laughs> I don't know. They're still yeah. paying a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He got paid. He got paid. 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 I mean, yeah. granted, one of the worst contracts in NHL history, but. Eh, it's not well, Pietro's. Yeah, it's not Pietro's. It's not true. Ryan Suter's times two. Nor is it uh, <laughs> Kovalchuk's. Contracts so nice they did it twice. <laughs> Um, do you think – do you, are, are, are you two – I'll ask both of <laughs> you – Bobrovsky contract apologist now? I um, – no. no. Thank you. No, I'm not. Because like, we can all agree it's, it, it's still not worth that contract, even though they're not mad that they paid it because they won a cup. Like it's still – we can still agree it's a bad contract, right? It's a – Contract yeah. and the, they're lucky they won the cup, or Absolutely. else it would have looked like it would have been a big black mark on their resume forever. It would have been a yeah. big ink stain. Like that's yeah, they're so lucky. I think it will be bad, but right now, I don't think you're mad that you pay Bobrovsky ten mil. It is a lot of money. It's not efficient. Like it's not like. Great. No, it's like it's. But yeah, no, I no like I I know what you're saying. Like you, like Florida's not like oh my god this contract right now. Mm-hmm. Of course, like they've figured out a way to work around it. But like in these last two seasons, it's been the most efficient it's ever been for him. Before that, he was awful under that contract. Almost lost the job multiple times. 
then he's had two good years, but like still like not ten million dollars a year years, and no. then it's only going to get worse from here. I was going to say bad like, contract. Like if we're going to compare goalies, like, and I'm going to get some real heat for this here too, but like, consume me. I, I wouldn't put Bobrovsky that much further ahead of Swayman or Ottinger or. You can't. And I mean, the I'd, other I'd put 8.5 him... goalies. I wouldn't even yeah. put him that far ahead of uh, Sorokin. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd put him ahead of Ottinger just because the 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 numbers don't lie, but like <laughs> Bobrovsky's numbers, even through the playoffs, like weren't in that, um, like win you the series category that Shesterkin can do. You know what I mean? Like he he wasn't a nine forty goaltender, like. Shesterkin has been or Vasilevsky was during their runs like it as much as he was fine he didn't cost them anything and he, and well no he was good like he's not that goalie sorry no no absolutely I 100% agree because like my first thought about that team was Reinhardt yeah yeah that was the guy that won them that sure that, or Kachuk or yeah. uh the Barkov one. or Barkov, yeah, like you know, like if if Bobrovsky was worth ten million dollars, then Shesterkin should get fourteen and a half. Uh, yes, and I think that's like I think this is one of those contracts that GMs just like strike off the table when they're doing negotiations with goalies. They're so like, hey, like that price is not the price now. I don't give a shit what price a rice in China is. No, that you're you're absolutely right. That's definitely a deal that. Like, if an agent were to bring it as a comparable, the GM would be like, we're not using that as a comparable. That's not a comparable. Yeah, exactly. Similar to, like, what what was Frieden saying about that with, I think it was the Stutzla contract? Yes. He was saying, you, you, if you bring that to the table, GM's going to be like, that's not comparable. Yeah, or the Norris contract, too. Yes. It was the same yeah. one. Yeah, because it's like, well, they had no one. They yes. had to sign had someone, to. and, like, they needed a star somewhere. I I really don't have a problem with this. It it ends a lot sooner than I thought. Like yeah, two more seasons. You only got two two more years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten mil is an overpay for Bobrovsky. Yes. But like, if Bobrovsky made eight point eight, eight point five, I don't mm-hmm. think that's a problem at all. Can you pull up like a list of goalie contracts right now? If he do, they have that because I I need oh, to certainly. see what the comparable is to right now. Like and like if he made like eight five. It's really not that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I need to see. I need to see some comparables here. Like I think Markstrom makes eight. He's no, like I on don't an, think no, Markstrom eight does. Eight by five. Yeah, go by AAV. Like from like. like yeah, like like know. okay, okay. For so for, like comparable, like, yeah, you you see Soros. At seven point seven four, just signed that contract. In today's cap client uh, climate, but he's also <laughs> like, honestly, he's not a goalie anyone wants. Is also the issue. He kind of just Soros. Uh, I don't know. About you that. don't think Florida could have won that? Could have won the cup last year with Soros in that? Come no. on, come on! I think Bobrovsky absolutely earned his money in that series as much as his numbers didn't scream i'm amazing or i'm great no, they did not like, he still made a sh- was below above expected think, and a bunch of goal line stands that no other goalie would probably be able to make if you were paying bobrovsky in that yeah if you were paying him eight million dollars okay above uc saros and markstrom and bennington but like below Nah. Or even in the Soro, yeah, with Sorokin, 8.2 yeah. and Swayman and Allmark, I don't think you should be paying him what Connor Hellebuck is making. I really don't. And that's 8.5. Like, I don't care how you cut it. Maybe it's not the worst contract ever. It's not a good contract. No. No, I, it's it's still not a good contract. I think that you are really downplaying how good Bobrovsky was in the playoffs last year. Like, I feel like you only have the three games that the Oilers won in your head. No. Because he was he was lights out. Let me see those numbers. Please Let's pull them up. Let's see them. Let me please pull was, them up. He also and, carried – carry is a big word. 
carried is a but he was massive word. He kept Let me, the oh. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He was a big part. So when they made the cup against Vegas, now they lost. But, but like, he was he was nowhere near as big a part as Matthew Kachuk and Barkov. Let's take a look. Yeah. Actually, in that year, I might venture to say he was. I don't think so. The the, Matt, the year but, they the year they won the cup? No. No, the year that they lost the cup though, Matthew Kachuk was in god mode those playoffs. So was Bob. A show. Please give me the playoff sure. stats. Not the not the regular I, season stats. Playoffs. I'm twenty three twenty four yeah. saved per sixty. Bobrovsky, oh yeah. Yeah, where's Bobrovsky? He's 12th. 12th. He's positive. 12th. I, I, can I, you, I don't remember it that way. What's okay. the, what's that raw save percentage on that? I mean, I know that the, we don't care too much about that. What's this just like raw above expected though? Because like seven, it's it's pretty I'll, good. Uh, it, just filter by that. I bet you he's third. Like, um, can you go to like Vasilevsky's in um, like the years prior? Yeah, in the years they won. Yeah, yeah. Before though, we're gonna go to the previous year. Okay, where? Oh, Jesus. Oh, give me that per 60 per 60. Cause again, he played the most games out of any goalie in the playoffs. Like, third, like you can't really take it easy. It's third. Okay. It was really second. I mean, we got Jack Campbell with like a fake four, four games, games played, played but like, him. but like Sturkin's above him in eight games played. And yeah. Okay. Still only played seven games. Cause he's better. Ex yeah, exactly. That's my point. But if he's but like, why? two and Bobrovsky's three, then like, how much better is he? Right? Much better. I'm not buying that if I'm a GM, though. The 2021 Cup run for Tampa Bay. Yeah. Why is Spencer Knight so high? Bassi, I mean, he only played two games. Bassi oh, okay. was unreal. Unbelievable. 946 save percentage. That's crazy. And a 966 on unblocked shots. Like, crazy. Look, Sergei Bobrovsky is a very, very good goalie. I'm not trying to say that he's not a good goaltender. I'm saying that, like, when you think of goalies that take over series, and it, he's not there. <coughs> I, I don't think he's the goalie that steals a series but he's definitely the goalie that keeps you in it long enough for you to fight back like i think that florida fell flat a couple of times both in their cup run and in their cup loss and he was arguably the whole reason that they kept trudging forward i i i just cannot buy that i think i think if, that bar if, none not even close the number one reason they they got to where they got both times was Barkov. If you had to pick one guy. And secondly, in the first run was Matthew Kachuk. I buy Kachuk for the first run. I buy Barkov for the second. But I don't buy Barkov for both. I um honestly I don't even really remember what we were arguing about. <laughs> all I all I asked was is Bobrovsky's contract still considered a bad contract? Yes. Well, if yes. if Bobrovsky plays how he's played for the last two years, for the final two years of this contract, <clears throat> I would it's say not. it's not I, a bad you know contract. What? And I agree with that. I actually, I, I do agree with that. If he plays, if he gives you $10 million worth of value over the next two years, then it's not a bad contract because then it's over half of the contract you'll have gotten that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As of right now, we're at really one year out of eight. Two years. At two. minimum two. No. 
Yeah, I'll, 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 what? I will give you the first year of that, the, the first playoff run. Last year, not $10 million of value. Okay, that's, that's fair. But still, like, like, like I'd give you, I'd give you 7.5. I'd give you 8. I'd maybe even push that to 8.5, not $10 million. I feel like <clears throat> I would say that Bobrovsky was a top five goalie last year. That's fair. And There's I, not five just, goalies making $10 million. I just feel like I'm just not tripping over 1.5 mil. I am. Like, I get, I sure I, like, no, I, I get I, that we do a, a lot, but like. No, and I get, I get what you're saying. Like I said, like Florida doesn't care. Well, and we're also looking at this through, like, the goggles of now with the cap now. But, like, you also have to remember that this was more than just 11% of the cap. It was, like, 12 and a half. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're trying to crunch numbers and you're trying to find a fourth-line guy or a third-line guy that's really going to invigorate your lineup and the best one you can find is, or, you know, what, what do they need? They need a third-line center for quite a while. Yeah. Of 1.5 swallowed up in a goalie. Womp. Well, that's just it. Like, it's hard. It's it's so difficult for me to, like, find a world unless it's Igor Shesterkin or Hellebuck in my S tier where, like, committing 12 whatever percent of your cap to your goalie is worth it. I don't know. Call me crazy. I still don't even want to do that. Like, I would rather have a very, very, very good goalie that makes eight than an elite S tier goalie that makes twelve. Yeah, like I I just don't care. Like yeah. if you've built your team properly, then you'll get just as many wins with your very very good goalie at eight as your S tier goalie at twelve. Sure. Yeah. I I would take Igor at twelve over like Andre at eight. That's crazy. To be honest with you. Actually, I would too. Yeah. Actually, no. F- Igor Igor, and, and Hellebuck are two like different breeds for me. Like, where, like, Ch- I know. Change the name to Sorokin. Nice Connor Steve. And yeah. I'd take that. Like, I, I would no, take I'm, I'm Sorokin take over. I'd, I'd take Sorokin at eight over. Yeah. Over Andre at eight? Or wait, what, what no, over, over Shisterkin at 12. That's like four mil cap. Like four yeah. mil is like how much the cap went up this year. That can't be understated. How much I know, cap that I know. really is. Sorokin scared me a lot last year, but the Islanders scared me last year. But like, and I, they had I really, so many I, injuries. I see what you're saying, but like, there's something to be said in the NHL for just having something nobody else has. And if you have Igor Shesterkin, you have something nobody else has. Agreed. That's fair. I just, how many times have we seen? a team have the best goalie in the league and actually win while paying that goalie what they asked. No, you're absolutely the, right. The it's, only it's time quite I, the question. The only time I've seen that happen would be when the goalie was still under an RFA. So and my, we've seen that lots. My counter to that would be something we've talked about lots, and that's just that there's no contingency plan for the best goalies in the league. Teams just ride them until the wheels fall off. I think that we absolutely would see it more if we saw the greatest goalies in the game play, playing 50 games, not 60. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I think there's also a lot to be, like, you know, spoken to the, the Vegas model. I And I agree with that. I agree with that as well. I absolutely do. Like, I would almost, like... But if I had to choose between being the Vegas model or having Igor Shostakhin, there's no question in my mind. You're rolling the dice with that model. You are rolling the dice with the Vegas model and praying something sticks. They're lucky it did. It hasn't for every other team that's tried it since. With Igor, you just have no question. Yeah. Yeah, that's great and all until he gets hurt or whatever. And then you're, you don't have the players because he spent the cap, but now he's gone. And you have the cap, but all the players are taken. And he's coming back next year. So you don't really even have the cap still. And you're like, well... I know, is, but is if you're a forward-facing team, like you can, you you figure that out. The same way, the same way Florida figured that out with Bobrovsky, 
the same way the Rangers have. I mean, they haven't won yet, but they've figured out how to ice a good team uh, where they are. I mean, they haven't paid them yet. But, but I mean, if if Shesterkin goes out this year, hypothetically, mm-hmm. has a knee issue, sure, goes Demko on us. Rip. <coughs> I have a hard time believing this New York team stays above a wild card position. I'm sorry. They don't have that much in their goaltending depths. They don't. Uh, you're th- they have Jonathan Quick. He's Jonathan 36. Quick, who had like 48 saves the other night or something ridiculous. Like thir- <laughs> yeah, and you're going to lean on him for the whole season? Hell no. No. That guy's not going to, like, if but he like, goes uh, down right now, that's your season. It's done. It's over. Okay. It's not. That's, that's the same for Edmonton with Connor McDavid. That's the same for Colorado with Nathan McKinnon. Like, that's the caliber that Igor Shesterkin is in compared to his peers as goalies. You know what? I've just never seen a team with, like, an elite goalie be and have that elite goalie be the reason they win. Like, goalies don't score goals. I'm not going to lie. Like, you win with goals. You said, when have we seen the top paid goalies win cups? Mm -hmm. We've seen this guy win back to back. Yeah, that's true. And we've seen this guy make the cup final in back-to-back years. I mean, actually, that's kind of facts. Like, Carey Price is at the top of this list. Carey Price yes. doesn't even play hockey. But he <laughs> does not even play hockey. Number I guess two, Carey, Carey, Carey Price... Price never won a cup, though. That was almost exactly the point I was going for. That yeah. was like, yeah. that, like, like it, also, he's though, like comparable at 10. But we're also talking about the Habs. How much better would have Montreal have been, though, if they had another $3 million to freaking spend? Do you realize we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, right? They're yeah. not winning anything. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, they were kind of decent in the this 2010s. Is, this is what happens when you can only you can only hire half French people. Okay, yeah. Well, that's like um, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> number two and three on this list have like all the cups in the last four years. <laughs> I that's cap. That's cap. I I know. I know. We have Vegas. We have Colorado. I know. But yeah, and I mean, like, what does Kemper get paid? I think six five, maybe five five. Exactly. And because of that, what was Colorado able to do at the deadline? Colorado didn't pay him that. He he left. Um, he the year they won the than, cup, he was making less than that before. Yeah. No. Yeah, but my point is that like they were paying him that when they won the cup. Yeah. No, they weren't. Didn't he win the cup with them? He did, but he was that was before this contract. His contract was expiring the year they won the cup. That's why he walked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but my that's uh, that's not my point. My point is that because he was making so much less at the time before he won the cup, that they yeah. were able to be hyper aggressive at the deadline and get all the pieces that made us go, oh, okay, okay, this is a world beater team now. This isn't just yeah. a top three team. This is like a they're gonna do it team. Okay. You need that cap flexibility. <coughs> I mean. It, it, Tampa did just fine. Yeah, but Tampa also got really kind of lucky with how many of their players just were ready and willing to go. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to be lucky system. to win the Stanley Cup. There's no two ways about that. But you also have to have elite talent that nobody else has. Yeah, I I mean, I I just think that Tampa's like a, a really great example of Maybe not the first time, but the second time, definitely having all of their picks work out exactly how they hoped. Yeah, I agree. Which is so, so unlikely, even on the best of teams to draft. Like, yeah, you you couldn't predict Braden Point again. No, no, that guy came out of nowhere. I mean, you also couldn't predict Gustav Forsling again. Yeah, uh, that that's. That's hockey. I don't know. All right, we need to get off this damn subject. Yeah, we, I I asked like literally. Like, I thought that was gonna be thirty seconds. It was like twenty minutes. I think it was. It was like probably half an hour. That was probably like. half hour. Yeah, we. I looked at the clock when we were like look going through the stats the first time, and it was like. Twelve twenty-two. So oh that was twenty God. minutes. Just in like goalie. Okay, let's fly through this frozen frenzy. Woof. Frozen Frenzy. <laughs> Frozen Frenzy's on a Tuesday night, October the 22nd. 
All Ugh. 32 teams playing. Ugh. Hit me with it, Drew. Why? Yeah. On a Tuesday. It was just a Tuesday. Bum, so, bum, bum, bum. I don't mind it being on a Tuesday, if I'm being honest. I really don't. Why? I just don't think the viewership changes all that much. Monday Night Football does better than Sunday Night Football. At least it did this week. But, you know why I do have a big problem with this? <coughs> so. MLB playoffs? No. Even worse. MLB well, playoffs worse. should be done. Or not not done, but should be getting ready for the finals on, on Tuesday night. Like, we should be done both the series that are alive right now and waiting for the finals to start. I think uh, that makes sense. I can confirm this. Yeah. The There is no NFL on Tuesday night. However, mm. the NBA opening night is Tuesday night. <laughs> What the hell are y'all doing? Um, now it is a three-one series lead for the New York Yankees. Yes, so but a there game could seven be a game seven is yeah. very unlikely. But game seven would be on a Tuesday night. Game seven would be on in on the that Bronx. Tuesday in the Bronx. Yes. However, I also agree. Like that's why I said they should be done. Like that that game that series shouldn't go seven. It could, but sports, yeah, yeah sports. I mean. <laughs> I love that we got we 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 have beef with this for like different reasons, but we still just have beef with it because it's still just a bad idea. It's just <laughs> bad marketing. <laughs> like it's just like it's one of those things where it's like just look in the mirror and think for like two <laughs> seconds. Just look and think. <sighs> like, okay, I get you don't want to compete with the NFL. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Fine. I get it. But also like. The biggest issue with hockey is that no one freaking takes it seriously because you don't take yourself seriously because you're too afraid to even try and compete with another league. Well, besides the NBA, but like the fact of the matter is that half of the NBA teams are fluff in the first place and not worth watching and everyone's bored of the NBA. It's true. Jay, you go first. I mean, they're kind of doing exactly that. Like they're battling with basketball. Yeah, they are going head-to-head with basketball. Like, I don't think that, like, I, I just don't, as much as I see what you're saying, I just don't think that it's smart, and clearly they don't either, to to go head-to-head with the NFL and, the, or, or college football. The NBA doesn't do that either. The NBA, exactly. Like, and, like it's, it's and just the, not a smart idea. It's not, and the NFL doesn't do it with college football, and college football doesn't do it with the NFL. If they won't do it with each other, then it can't be smart for the NHL to do it with them. Yeah, but college football and the NFL like legitimately split demographics. Like when they if they play at the same time, they will split. But yeah. like hockey less so. But it absolutely will. Like I like I'll be the first to tell you, I gotta pick one. And I'd wanna watch both. Yes, I'm probably picking hockey at the end of the day, but that's because I'm a diehard hockey fan. I think that your average American is likely going to pick the NFL in that situation that probably or maybe would watch hockey if it wasn't during the NFL. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, look, the only thing I'm ever concerned about competing with is NFL Red Zone. Sunday, Red Sunday, zone. Sunday. Sunday's locked up. It's done. It's toasted. I don't want to ever fight that battle. It's just too well done. Uh, the programming is too airtight. And quite frankly, hockey's not built for that type of programming you aren't going to beat it yeah it, it's an adhd wonderland i mean hopefully tuesday is that i really hope it is i really hope it's great i have so little faith in espn to do anything well uh, and i mean like <laughs> it's just one of those things where like hockey isn't conducive to doing split screen in the first place because like what you have four teams on the power play <laughs> with a scoring where you're going to tile I think it'll be more similar to like when the NFL, because the NFL will do like the like this is live and then this is what you missed thing. I think it'll be a lot more of the, the this is what you missed thing because it's a lot harder to predict when the things are gonna happen in hockey. Whereas like in the NFL, clearly there's red zone. Like you're in the red zone. It's clearly clear something's about to happen here, right? Or something big happened in midfield. Yeah, like I don't know. I I I really do have 
so little faith in the ESPN over every other network, honestly. Like TNT, Sportsnet, I'd take all, all day, and I don't have faith in them much either. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have very little faith in any sort of broadcast media at this point. Yeah. Especially with, yeah. like, just the way culture's moved and the fact that they're in broadcast media. Mm-hmm. Like, the funny thing about broadcast media is that they so desperately need to keep with the times in order to mm-hmm. keep their viewers. But, like, inherently keeping with the times <laughs> is going to put them out of a job. Yeah. Because, like, how many people watch television anymore? How many people pay for cable? Not this guy. I mean, like, yeah. Is the New York Times going to tell you to stop buying their paper? No, of course not. I really think the only person that I know that has cable is my grandmother. Genuinely. Yeah. And my my other problem with this is like, okay, we're afraid to compete with the NFL. We're we're afraid to compete with football. Yeah. It's only getting bigger. Mm-hmm. So do you want to pick the fight now or in a few years when they're an absolute like well, they're a juggernaut now, but like the yeah. ultimate world beater Thanos juggernaut. When they've suddenly they done are a that, though. well, yeah, but like they don't do Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights yet. But like, I bet you they will, because you know what? Mm. Amazon loves streaming games, and Amazon loves slapping their name on shit. Oh fuck yeah, I love putting my name on shit. Putting my name on shit's the best. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but the Amazon like like they got their stuff already. Yeah, and they're gonna expand, and like they did it once, mm-hmm. went great. Who's to say that they don't do an Amazon Tuesday night game every week? Then yeah, what? Really don't. Who's to say that like there is the capacity to do a game every night of the week in the NFL? Yeah, you but like could. like okay, I I see what you're saying. They only play once a week. But it's like All there's the- been no like no signs that that's coming anytime soon. Okay, yeah, but like this is a league that has like 32 of the most how many league teams 32 36 i think it's 32 32 32 32 of the richest most power hungry white men in the entire world but they're not adding more they wouldn't be adding more games they'd just be moving a game yeah but like like why would they do that because they wouldn't be splitting their viewership and they'd be taking someone else's viewership more consistently yeah i know what you're saying i just don't think that that's like like until we see any sing- single sign that that's ever going to be a thing, like why? W- like I just don't. Why would they change it after like forty years? Because you got to be ahead of the times. The NFL. No, the NHL needs to be ahead of the freaking. I know here. you but because they any need to beat the curve. Ever. Like like, yeah, I don't know. If there's anyone who's going to aggressively expand into having a game every night, yeah, it would be the NFL. I hope so. They have the capacity, no. they have the fans, they have the exposure. Yeah. They only play once a week. Like it's like a perfect shitstorm for absolutely consuming all of sports culture and every network that possibly Yeah. Like, I, I like I, I, I get what you're saying. I just don't like I've never seen any like idea that that's gonna happen and until they do, I also don't like expect the NFL to be proactive about things because they tend to never be. I, that's not like a concern for me at all. No, I, I think it's more important to not battle with them right now than it is to like get ahead of them having games on you. Yeah, I don't know. And Tuesday, like people have things on Tuesday. There's Cub Scouts. You could say that brownies. for any day. I'm not going. Yeah, like I, I really think I, I agree. You could say that for any day. Like I said, Monday Night Football got more viewership than Sunday Night Football. Why not Friday? <clears throat> what do I, we got? What do we got going that, on on Friday? Because people do stuff on Fridays. That's why not Friday. Yeah, but everyone's at the bar doing stuff. Watching your game. Are any of us at the bar? Lots of people are. I am working, but no, oh, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm usually <laughs> working too, but like <laughs> but I but I'm like, I'm around a TV and checking in and seeing all of the scores like even when I'm working. I I suppose, it's, but like mo- people like tend to not be doing anything on weeknights. That's why those games are better pursued for those nights i mean yeah but you could argue the same thing about football like friday night football is still huge is it not what there is no friday night football 
no? like, I guess there's a college. There's like <laughs> not even a marquee college game. Yeah, but they there's usually, like yeah. a few college games. It's not that huge. Well, like Sunday. Sunday's a busy ass day. Sunday should be the busiest day for most people because you have to get ready for the next week plus do everything that you. Yeah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. Sunday's your what? Easily my least favorite or least busy day. I don't leave the house on Sunday. Yeah, but you're a bartender. Like, well, you work at a no. bar. <laughs> so, like, of course you, like. Yeah. But, like, I. Th- I would imagine, yeah, that like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, people are doing things. That's like, why like Monday through Thursday is probably the best nights because people go home and cook dinner and watch a game. Yeah, but they're going to watch 32. There's no way that you're... No, but they're going to throw on hopefully Red Zone. It's a waste. It's just such a waste. You're not going to get, like, all you're doing is splitting your already minimal viewing audience to an even smaller fraction across a bunch of markets that desperately need exposure. I don't, no. I don't, I don't think I buy that. Especially because I also think it's more likely someone's going to, like, it, for a test run of something that you've never done before and you don't know if it's going to work. I thought they did this last year. No, it's the first one. No, they did it last year. They did? Yeah. Wait. Yeah, they did. I think last year. But they had like 30 teams playing. They had almost everyone. I think what it was, I could be wrong about this, is that every team played. Yeah. But it was it was like way more spread out. Like games started at 10, 11, right. 11, 30, 12. It oh, wasn't, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It wasn't that. as like. Because it was on a weekend. It was on a Saturday, yeah. A Saturday, yeah. As so this is kind of different because, like, we there's like there's gonna be like five games on at a time instead of like two. Right. Right. Yeah. So Which a, I, it is different. I don't mind because then at least by the weekend we're back to normalcy. Because that was the thing I hated about the Sunday one last time was that there was no games Friday and no games Sunday. But my my other issue is just that like. That's actually they, probably why they did it. They did this. Well, I also know that they intentionally did this so that they could create a red zone like product. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Which yeah, is like it's been a huge marketing point for them. So we are trying to compete with the NFL then. So why aren't we buying into our own? Well, product no, I don't think that's trying to compete more. with the NFL. That's looking at something the NFL did very successfully and trying to copy it. That doesn't mean you're trying to compete with them. That means you're just trying to take their good ideas. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I've never taken someone's good idea that I'm not trying to compete like compete with. So, well, I guess so, but like, nah, nah, I don't buy that. I also like. I bet you that's part of why they did it, though, is because the gate revenue is so important on those Friday Saturday nights, and when they do it this way, they can still have games all through those. Because this pretty, is a. That's- that is a good point. The gate revenue is a really, really good point. This is more of a trial of doing something for TV. You know what I mean? Rather than the gate. Th- that's also my issue, though. It's like TV's dead. We, no, but watching. No, 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 it's not. Like, it yes, cable is dead. Is. Watching games is not dead. No. At home. In fact, it's only going to go up as people can afford to go to games even less and less. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's like, you, like a Sportsnet package just to watch like the NHL for nine months is what, $250, $300? Like, yeah, but I mean, look, I'm not trying to step on any sponsor's toes here, but you don't need to pay it to watch them. I don't. Nor do I. Yar. I think we should end on that. <laughs> we got really long-winded about a lot of this, and that's what I love about this show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that that went nowhere fast. I know, I love it. <laughs> Those conversations went a mile a minute, and we, we solved absolutely nothing, <laughs> came to zero conclusions. Okay, so, yeah, um, to recap this episode for everyone, episode 80 of Stick Talk Hockey. Nashville has a long leash and a short leash. Colorado has a long leash and a short leash. 
<laughs> Sergey Bobrovsky is overpaid and underpaid. He's not underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> Igor Shosturkin, um, you really, really, really want him more than anyone else, or you also just don't want to do that and you want to run the Vegas system. Frozen Frenzy is a bad idea, and we get it. As always, I'm Tico. That's my co-host. I'm yours, Trilly. That's my producer. Big J. Keep your f***ing head up. Keep your head up. Boom. 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 Stick tight. Stick tight. Stick tight. Stick tight.